In this video, I'm going to go over a common problem that plagues Tektronix TDS 5, 6, and 7 series scope. This one happens to be a Tektronix TDS 510A. And what the common problem is is that this won't turn on. And a lot of people just believe that the CRT is bad. It already probably has a lot of hours burnt out or whatever. And then they go ahead and just yank the whole entire CRT assembly, rip the driver board out. And then they go and put an LCD equivalent to it and call it a day. I'm actually going to show you how to fix the problem because I fixed about seven of them that had the same exact problem pretty much. And what the problem is caused by is, is that this anode cap right here, the rubber deteriorates on the top part, develops pinholes, and it ends up arcing to the chassis on the side right here. And how you can tell if it arced to the chassis on the side when you go and slide the CRT over or you move it, You'll see a lot of dust build up, black soot and stuff like that on the side. And if you clean it off, you'll see where there's a nice shiny spot just in that spot right there. That's the dead giveaway that that's what happened. Now normally what happens to fix the issue is, is that the horizontal transistor ends up blowing out as a result. In order to get to the horizontal transistor, you do have to remove the processing board on top. Which you do have to remove the two rear screws that hold the Centronics interface board there then remove all the cables from the power supply and also the board that goes to the acquisition board you have to remove the fan cable all the connectors in the back and of course the output that goes to the driver board for the CRT itself once you get done removing this board then you remove all the screws that hold the shields that cover the power supplies and then once you do that then you can go ahead and remove the screws that hold the high voltage power supply which is on this side right here and you can remove the whole entire CRT assembly. Now one note though, when you're dealing with CRTs, they do have a high voltage on that anode cap there. So you have to be ultra careful and make sure you discharge that to ground or you use a bleeder resistor. So that way you don't end up getting bit or you end up killing yourself. So whatever you do, always discharge the side of the anode cap. Just stick a screwdriver is the easiest way. Right where the anode cap is underneath here, be very careful, of course, so you don't go and gouge into the CRT. Just make sure you hit the metal contacts to ground, or you can use a bleeder resistor. And then once you discharge, then you can safely remove that anode cap off the top side. It's actually towards this side right here, the CRT, and be able to remove the whole entire CRT assembly straight out. Then you can access your high voltage board right there, take it out, check components, see what blown out, because yours could be different. And once you get done checking all that, then you can go and place what's necessary on that board, repair the board, put everything back together, put the CRT back in, then you can go and put the shield and the processor board back in. Now to fix the anode cap issue, what I use is clear RTV silicone. And this stuff works great because I also use it on vintage TVs too and roads, so make sure you get the clear kind, don't get the black stuff, get the clear type. And it's very important that you let it sit for 48 hours before you even attempt to try to power it back on so that silicone can cure um, fully. And once it cures fully, then you'll be able to power on because if you don't, what will happen is it'll arc right through that silicone and it'll hit ground again and you'll end up with the same problem. So just be patient. Give it 48 hours fully. Use a fan, of course, to help speed up the process so it can cure faster. And then go and reassemble everything and you should be good. Another thing I did too was I insulate the side where it was arcing over to as well as an extra precaution. So I can make sure I don't have to take this thing apart again. So let's go and look to see exactly. We'll see if we can see the fix sort of. I'm not sure if we can or cannot at this angle. But you can kind of see it. There you go. And you can see the silicone right there on top of that anode cap. So it's already on there. And then right on the side there I got of course the insulation tape. So that way just in case to, for extra precaution I realigned it. So I'm not going to take it all the way back apart. One thing to note though is you do have to remove this front panel first. When you're actually removing the front protective glass and the button assembly for the scope. So you do have to move that, otherwise if you try to remove this force, you'll end up ripping this cable here. So make sure you do remove this panel first, 
and then disconnect the cable and then unscrew and then you can remove that and it's just press fitted in you can see where it's just kind of just sits in there and you can push it right back in and then you also do too have to remove the floppy drive because this metal thing to be right against that glass is not gonna allow you to take it out so remove the floppy drive then you can slide that out in order to slide the whole entire CRT assembly and this glass assembly right out so I'm gonna go and get this all the way back together and I hope it works I haven't even tried it yet so I went ahead and reassembled the front panel of the scope and you do have to have at least this keypad and also this glass with the contacts on it in order to be able to work the scope so I just decided to go ahead and reassemble the whole entire thing since I was pretty much already most of the way there it's easy enough to unclip this and take it apart if I have to but one thing is that I do have to repair is this before I sell it originally I wasn't planning on actually repairing the scope I was just only brought the scope to actually pull the feet off for the 784 that I have behind me because those cracked off and this one had good ones and used the same back chassis and everything so originally was the only reason why I brought this but seeing that it passed SPC that it passed all the hardware checks and the fact that there is no leaky compasses on the processor or acquisition board I figure I'll go ahead and repair the scope and give it another chance but one thing is Parts are just very expensive for these on eBay. Like for this membrane, someone had it up there for over a hundred bucks. Just for this. It's not even you know, but people ask ridiculous amount of money when it comes to parts like that because they're hard to find nowadays. So what I did instead, because I'm not gonna pay someone a hundred bucks just for this, was I ended up buying another junk box scope. I offered the guy forty bucks, it was sixty bucks with shipping. And then I'm just going to go and take this because the same exact strip and put it on this one. And I have the scope pretty complete and cleaned hopefully. But overall, let's go ahead and power it on and see if the fix actually worked. And it does take time because it has to go through a whole series of hardware checks before it starts up. But I can see that CRT is working. And it's going to be normal, you're going to see squiggly lines and all that because as it does the hardware checks, it does that, that's normal on these. I'm going to wait for it to power up. Yep, I'm glad I also got that aligned perfectly, so I don't have to go back in there to try to tilt the CRT to get it aligned properly. But there you go, it passed our hardware check. And then here, and I'll show you also past calibration too. And you can see it passed our test, and that's the reason why I fixed it, because it's actually a fully working scope. The only issue was, was the CRT. So I'm going to go and probably put a signal into it in the next part of the video so to see if it actually displays a signal and so forth. But overall, that fixed the problem. So to recap, all you have to do is check that anno cap. If you see like, you know, shiny spot on that side, then change our hawked over. And what you need to fix it is clear RTV. That's it. And of course, if you blew your horizontal transistor you might have to replace that too as well but if you you can also put your ear up to the scope as you power it on if you hear high voltage chances are it's just probably that cap right there so let me go ahead and put a signal to this and i'll be right back so went ahead and um put a signal into it and you can see right now i got it at 50 megahertz and it's actually pretty much dead on. It works on all the channels they tested already, but I'll go and show you at least the second channel. I'm not gonna go through all of them, but we'll do that. We'll go channel two, trigger menu, we'll trigger off channel two. There you go, I didn't turn off the RF. Okay, and then we'll turn it back on. There you go. And we'll also measure too, why not?
and you can see there there's your tray so we'll go and put it back on channel one you can see how horribly slow this thing is that's why I don't like these scopes but whatever Okay, we'll turn the signal back up and we'll pump up the frequency to 200 megahertz. Why not? Yeah, it might even go all the way up to a gigahertz. And there you go. Let's go to 500. Okay. We'll do a measure two on that. Why not? Yeah, I really gotta fix that. <laughs> That's annoying. And there you go. And let's just go to 750 megahertz. See what I can do. Let's see what it does. It ain't looking good. Okay, doesn't like that. Let's go to 600. There you go, clears right up. Okay, let's see what the voltage is. Yeah, it's, it's like about five. Let's just do 550. Okay. And there you go, and then we'll go back down to, we just put 10 megahertz. Ah, uh, come on, there you go. And you can see the scope does function, so the only repair I got left to do is just go ahead and repair these buttons. And that will be it. So I'm going to go bring the camera overhead so I can show you that the capacitors did not leak on these. This here is the top view of the scope and this here is the actual processing board of the scope itself. The acquisition and the tin arrays are on the bottom. But one note before I end this video and the reason why I'm showing you this is for this NV RAM right here. You do want to make sure you get that backed up. Either you send it out and have someone do it for you, or if you're capable of doing it yourself, just make sure you desolder very carefully where you don't damage the traces or whatever, and use a programmer, read the data off of it onto an SD card or something, and then tape the SD card on top of this. The reason for that is, is because this battery is over 20 plus years old, there is an internal battery in this, and when it goes dead, you end up losing the calibration values of the scope itself. Now this one here you don't need to do, that's just a real time one, so that one's not important. But this one here you definitely do want to make sure you back that up so you don't lose your cal values. Otherwise you'll end up having to send your scope out to have it recalibrated or if you got the equipment you'll spend several hours recalibrating this thing. So make sure you back up the data off that and usually what I do is I just put it on an SD card and I'll tape it on top of that so when that goes bad then I can go and buy a replacement one and then go ahead and program that chip with the data that's on that SD card but what I am going to do is just replace this since I am selling the scope with a brand new one and I'll probably still tape the SD card to the top of it anyway so that way the buyer will have a copy for it down the road just in case that battery goes bad just make sure you do not buy this off eBay out from China because they're junk buy it from a reputable part supplier but this is the end of the video now.